I'm going to show you how to do a stepwise regression to see which of these variables are good predictors for the number of relapses somebody has. So the, the predictors, the IVs, are stress, anxiety, depression, underscore clinical, and PTSD. So here we go. There's our data. All right, we're going to try to predict relapses with these other four IVs. And they want us to do a stepwise. So we're going to go to Analyze. Regression linear. First thing I'm going to do is click the stepwise button before I forget. Okay, so with stepwise, that means that the software is going to do all the checking, the math, and it will not list those variables which are not significant. I'll say it again stepwise weeds out the non significant variables. Okay, so what were our variables? They were, uh, I believe it was stress. Anxiety, depression clinical, PTSD. All right, let's click our statistics. We always want our square descriptives, part and partial, collinearity. Durbin checks for autocollinearity. This will check for our homoscedasticity. Mahalanobis, that's the one we use for our multivariate normality and there's a table somewhere that will say that if you have four IVs in a predictive model in a regression model then your Mahalanobis should be somewhere your maximum Mahalanobis should be somewhere around 17 or 18 but we're not going to worry about that right now click continue and that's it let's click don't forget the DV and the DV is relapses there they are right there so let's click OK And there's our box. Let's, let's interpret the box. So here's the means of the IVs and the DV and standard deviations. We really don't use those in regression. So here's the correlation box uh, matrix. And I'm seeing that some are strongly correlated, some are not so. And the variables entered. This tells you that we're using the stepwise method. Okay, so... That's, that's what this method is. It's either stepwise, hierarchical, or just a plain old multiple standard regression, that kind of thing. So here is our first box model summary. So according to the stepwise, the, the biggest predictor, the strongest predictor of relapses is their PTSD scores. Okay, So the first model is a, a simple regression using PTSD as the IV, and relapses as the DV, and we got a huge R squared here, 0.329, and that is significant. So, first piece of information, PTSD is significant at predicting relapses. The second model, it added anxiety. So we look at the R squared again and see how much it changed. It changed about 0.06, about 6.5%, and that is a significant change. So anxiety is a significant predictor of relapses. The last one is we added clinical depression. So the R squared jumped up to 4.420, and that raised it about 2.5%. It's not great, but it is significant. So in other words, all three of these predictors are significant predictors of relapses. And the ANOVA model should agree with that, and it does, right? There's the first model with strictly PTSD, second model with PTSD and anxiety, third one with PTSD, anxiety, and depression clinical, and they all three are significant predictors. Here's your coefficients box. So we, if you want to see which one of these predictors is the most popular or the strongest, you simply look at their beta weights. So our beta weight for all three, go down to the, the model that contains all your variables. And PTSD by far, anxiety number two, depression number three. And they are all indeed significant. And you'll notice it did not put in stress. So stress was not a significant predictor. So let's look at some of the assumptions. It did not violate multicollinearity, right? That's your tolerance test in your VIF. If your tolerance was less than 0.1 or your VIF was greater than 10, that means you violated, but we did not violate. 
and we already know collinearity, and we already know collinearity. So this is the Mahalanobis distance. The critical, or the maximum from our data set is 16.3, which is less than the critical of about 18. We'd have to look that up in a table or use the Excel the spreadsheet I have here. So this is going to test us for, let me pull that up so you can see it. This is the Z pred and the Z residual. You click on it to bring up the chart editor. You add a best fit line, and then you add the lowest line. Let me put this right there, right the lowest line. We want that line to be relatively straight, and eh, it's not perfect. So it looks like this it might have violated the assumption of homoscedasticity, but maybe not. All right, let's just keep going. So the last thing I'm going to do is write up the regression equation using the unstandardized B coefficients, these guys. Okay, So it's going to be predicted Y, which is the predicted number of relapses, would be 0.861 times the, their PTSD scores plus 0.480 times their anxiety scores plus 0.026 times their clinical depression scores, minus the constant, 17.639, plus the error. And that's it. MGZ, out.